Hey guys, welcome to another episode of our, I was looking at the wrong camera already. <laughs> welcome to another episode of Already Christianity. For those of you that join us on a regular basis, thank you. We appreciate it. We hope you benefit from these discussions of critical thinking through biblical issues, giving a biblical understanding of what God expects of us and handling his word properly. It's it's, it's, a, it's really a, a 2 Timothy 2.15 and a 1 Peter 3.15 and 16 mindset as we are you know, do our best to show ourselves approved to God. Workers, that means we have to work, who are not embarrassed to properly handle the word of truth. And you combine that with 1 Peter 3.15 to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us why we have the hope within us. Our hope is in the Lord, especially in a, right. in a time when everything looks like it's going to, to shit, you know, hell in a handbasket. And we just have to believe that God's in control and that he's sovereign and knowing he's not being taken off guard or by surprise. And it's difficult sometimes. And so we have to always be prepared to give an answer, regardless of how things look, are we satisfying our duties to heaven as followers of Jesus Christ? And, and that's to make disciples or we don't do it, but to lead to Christ and help make disciples of all men, Matthew 28, <clears throat> 19 as well, the great commission. So, and if you're here for watching us for the first time, either now or later down the road, Welcome. This is already Christianity. The R stands for real, raw, redemptive. We have real conversations. Yes, we do it in a very raw way, if you haven't already could tell already. But we, we hope and pray that these conversations and this critical thinking through biblical through scripture, excuse me, leads you, as it has us, to a redemptive relationship with Jesus Christ. That's ultimately what our goal is. It's not about us. We don't care about hearing ourselves talk or getting attention for ourselves it's really redirecting people to christ making sure that people look to him for the answers it's not us george and i are just two guys with an opinion that study and hopefully properly handle his word and lead people to christ <clears throat> and to apply heaven's standards we're going to talk about that today heaven standards to everything that we see to to every aspect every situation to ourselves and that that's kind of tough i mean that's it's tough business when you look in a mirror and you see how dirty your face is it's kind of like the reference to the law, right? The Old Testament. People say, what the hell's wrong? Old Testament. What do we need the Old Testament for? It's all about the gospel. Well, the law in the Old Testament, as we say, is like the mirror that you look in your, you look at yourself and you say, shit, I'm dirty. <laughs> My face sucks. I'm, I'm dirty. But you don't use that same mirror to clean yourself. You use something else. And that's the gospel. Yeah. Obviously, that's Christ's words in his life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. He's everything to us. And so he has lordship over our lives. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, that means he gets to decide how you live your life. He gets to decide how you live your marriage. <clears throat> he gets to decide how you parent. If you truly hand over lordship, governorship to him, he gets to decide how you do your work in your profession, your character, how you deal with friends, how you deal with foes, enemies, how you deal with setbacks and successes. I mean, we look to Christ for everything, period, end of story. We were not designed to live on our own. We are designed to have free agency to make a choice because in, in, in that choice, that's a true expression of love. We get to have a true relationship with Jesus if we so choose. But we're not designed to know the difference between good and bad or good and evil. Same problem in the garden, right? We're supposed to look to God for those answers because if we define those things, we'll screw it up. And, and the world, I think we see the example today, the world has screwed it all up. And one of the things they've screwed up is manhood. <laughs> Transition time, that's an honor to Karen. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, manhood. I mean, we look at manhood today and, and, and I'm growing up I mean, you know, you know, I'm, and you are too, George, but you know, I'm really passionate about manhood. You know, we've, we've taught twice before in, in men's Bible studies, the character, biblical characteristics, characteristics of a biblically minded man. Mm -hmm. Remember we did that study? Um, the second time we did it, <clears throat> excuse me, it took us like 18 months. It took us around a year yeah. and a half to get through. Yeah, that's right. It had a beginning, but it had no end. It had no end. I mean, because... Yeah, I remember. It just, it just spawned off into so many different topics. I still have the study somewhere. You know, I put it together. You and I talked about it. And then I, I went out and put it together and you know, took your advice on some of that stuff. And we, we sat down and we just taught yeah. it twice. And it really, I, do. I mean, so much came out of that. <clears throat> but we won't go through that today specifically. But, but masculinity, biblical masculinity is, is, is a good thing. I mean, the whole term, and you know, I... I, I get almost an autoimmune response when, when I hear the term toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. That irritates the absolute shit out of me because there's nothing toxic about true masculinity. If you want to talk about, as you and I talk about with the men, if you want to talk about toxic masculinity, you're talking about something else. Yeah. You've distorted something great. <clears throat> and it's not masculinity anymore. Call it toxic fill in the blank. 
but it's not toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's bullshit. So, and so we have a definition of what that is. Growing up, you know, yeah. the idea of a man was, you know, gun smoke or, you know, or John Wayne or something. I mean, I'm aging myself now, but we had, we had this, we had these models, this, this archetypes of, of manhood. And now the example of a manhood is some pansy ass, I guess, remnants of a person that is, is just broken. I mean, just, just the brokenness of, of the men today that they're overly, I believe, sensitive and, and, and cannot persevere through mm -hmm. shit and, and don't understand what it means to be a servant leader and don't, un, they, they think they're comfortable. They're not comfortable in their own skin mm -hmm. or their own duty. And they don't even believe they have a duty. I mean, it's almost like they're beaten down because of the, the abuse maybe, or, or the misuse of, of manhood by certain people, not by everybody in the past. Mm -hmm. And, and then now they feel like they're in some type of penance by, by allowing people to shit on, on, on the yeah. idea of a manhood and calling it toxic. Yep. Cause there's nothing toxic about masculinity, true biblical masculinity, at least. And, and you see that the, the, the men today, I think their psyche is broken. Like they just, they, they, they don't know what to believe or how to think. They don't know what to stand for. They fall for everything. <clears throat> and, and, and they're just, and we, we know ironically that testosterone levels are, are down. I mean, just men aren't the men that you and I grew up around and what that means. How can you be, you know, a, a fierce, but also loving at the same time. It's called meekness, right? I mean, I grew up, as you know, in, in the martial arts community, you know, training and fighting and the true martial artist. And, you know, I've, I'm fascinated by the study of, of the samurai <clears throat> and, and, and the, the samurai was, was a fierce, deadly warrior but also was chivalrous and benevolent and merciful and polite. I mean, there's, there's eight characteristics, eight virtues of the Bushido warrior, you know, the way of the warrior. And I'm going to go over them also. Cause you know, we've done that. We're working on that, that men's conference, you know, the yep. biblical manhood, yeah, biblical manhood, you know, spirit, being a spiritual samurai <clears throat> and, you know, the, and mastering the art of manhood. We're, we're working on that. Hopefully well, that'll be, We'll notify you guys when, we, when we're finally going to put that together. But being a spiritual samurai, I think, is important for us today. We have to go back to that. And so let's kind of talk about it. I know you've, you've, you've kind of brought up that dude, Andrew Tate, behind us and, and, and the standards that we have and the overcorrection. I think you and I were talking about earlier, people that don't know who Andrew Tate is. He's a, I just found out about him three months ago or something like that. Man. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Was it Salo or Jeff or somebody mentioned him? Probably Salo. Maybe Salo, probably Salo. And I said, who the hell is Andrew Tate? I got a lot of followers. I don't give a shit. I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> and what does he do? I mean, does he own a business? No, he's a former kickboxer, which that part I like about him. He's a former kickboxer. And he was just saying some crazy things yeah. for a while. Yeah, it's putting him mildly. Yeah, and, he's, and he said some really crazy <laughs> things. It was, almost sounded like he was just doing it to, to get a stir out of people. Yeah. Um, so like three months ago, I found out about him. I started watching some videos on him. I thought he was kind of off the rail on a lot of things, but he has a tremendous following and there's a lot of intrigue behind him. He just got out of jail recently in Romania because mm -hmm. he's been accused of sex trafficking and all this shit. And they can't, they, they have no, they have, they have not proven evidence against him, no evidence against him. So I, I won't get into his old story, but so he's been doing interviews and he's back out and all this other shit. But, but you, you had some very harsh criticism of him when we were talking. I just think it's, it's good to, I don't know, kind of talk it out and talk about what it means to be a biblically minded man and biblical masculinity. Well, I mean, he's not, it is not subtle, right? That's, yeah. He's not subtle. And, and, I, and I think that's great. I mean, that, that's a good, good quality. I mean, there's certain things that you got to be absolutely crystal clear on. <clears throat> and I think we, one of the things we need to be absolutely crystal clear on that we would align with Andrew Tate on is that, yeah, there is, there is an absolute <clears throat> cultural effort across every major institution from academia to corporate boards, shit, to politics, to turn young men into pansy ass, the, the pansy ass beta male soy boy mm. um, version of men, which is no no legitimate version of men at all. But there isn't there there truly is an outright well subsidized effort to emasculate men. Mm. And so on that <laughs> note, I can say, uh, I mean, I am, and I know you are in full agreement with Andrew Tate on that it, issue. Mm -hmm, yeah. it's, it's what he does. It's what he does with that that's just – that's actually worse or as bad as the problem that he's claiming to want to fix. He doesn't offer a solution to the problem, 
that's my greatest gripe. He doesn't offer a solution to the problem because what he's offering isn't manhood. In fact, the guy's, he's contradictory as hell. Mm. He'll, he'll say how much he loves women, how precious they are, how valuable they are. And then he'll literally objectify them. He'll turn into things that are literally things that exist singularly to provide him pleasure. In fact, that's one of the reasons why he's literally vacillated. I don't think he made an informed decision at all. Um, he made, he, he literally vacillated towards Islam because he okay. thinks Islam is superior to Christianity. Now, the things he says about how Christianity is being handled, a lot of it's true. Yeah. I mean, I look at American evangelical Christianity. In fact, we talk a lot about well, so it on the show. Say what the, what the evangelical, I mean, because, I mean, he, he basically says that, I mean, I mean, he criticizes the Pope, for instance, as a, a prominent leader in the Christian movement. We know that, I mean, I wouldn't consider, I would not consider the Pope a Christian. Mm. I wouldn't. Mm. I, and I wouldn't. And I may be <laughs> radical for some people, but if you understand biblical Christianity and what that means, and when you look at the Pope and you look at the institution of the Vatican, uh, good luck reconciling those two. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for another show. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, now you just got people all jacked up. <laughs> yeah, good well, for you. that's all right. <laughs> um, there is a book out there um, that you guys should get. It's called The Gospel According to Rome. And it's written, by, I think, by James McKnight. It's, this guy's a former Catholic. He's a former Catholic leader. And I think he does the best job out there. It's been out there since 1995. <clears throat> Excuse me. What is it called? The Gospel According to Rome. The Gospel According to Rome. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and he does an excellent job at, at going through the claims of Catholicism and going through the institutions of Catholicism <clears throat> and going through the, the, the clerical <clears throat> roles of the bishop and the pope. Does everyone need to <laughs> take a swig of water? <laughs> as, a, as an old prophet of mine used to say, I feel like I got a frog in my throat and it's got its legs crossed. <clears throat> Let's all just have some water. Is it the <laughs> devil? No, I don't think it is. Such a gift for talking about the Pope, asshole. <laughs> Someone's thinking that. Go ahead. Um, I don't think it's the devil. I'm joking. Uh, it's not so much erosion of the vocal cords as it is misplaced saliva in the trachea. <laughs> but <clears throat> let me move on. And so we, there's no there's no question talking about the papacy and Catholicism have serious problems with that uh, in, in terms of its misalignment with biblical Christianity. So I think some of his criticisms are legitimate. He cites the Pope basically creating a place or making it okay for the LGBTQA movement. Um, some of the you know he the, the Pope is um, the Pope the Pope isn't out there saying that gay marriage is okay. But I don't know of any criticism of gay marriage, for instance. I, I, I really don't. Or, and, I, and I don't see the Pope out there differentiating between what the Bible teaches on sexuality, for example, and, and, and homosexuality. The Pope has not drawn a clear contract. So he hasn't called mm. those things unbiblical. So Tate, Tate draws on that. And he basically says that, that, that Christians stand for nothing. They defend nothing worth defending in the scripture. Um, and I mean, I just can't disagree that on so many things. And I don't, I mean, there's so many topics, Nico, we talk about him here in R.A. Christianity, but generally speaking, he's got a very solid point. Who's a Tate again? We're back to Tate. <clears throat> so <clears throat> he, he hits at Christianity. He doesn't understand what Christianity I is. I agree with that. I've heard he some of He sees yeah. what really shitty representatives of Christianity do. And he criticizes that. And he says, that's Christianity. But you always say you can't take really shitty representatives and then throw the worldview or, or, or yeah, throw yeah, the faith. Don't, don't judge an ideology by its abuse. Yeah, right? by, its, by its abuse. So, so are there, there's points of alignment, but I mean, they're very superficial. Um, but let's just be candid about this guy. His, he's got basically three messages. Number one, um, I sleep with women. I like sleeping with women. Women are meant to be objectified. They're here for my pleasure. They're not as smart as men. And I mean, if he's vacillating towards Islam, Islam actually makes that same very claim in its hadiths and its traditions um, and in the Quran. He, he advocates that men are very clearly intellectually and otherwise superior to women. Now, that's that's a departure from what the Bible says. Yeah. Right. I mean, we, we, we you, you and I have talked a lot about that, of how the, the Bible clearly elevates women and says that women are equal with men. They're equal with men in nature. Right. They're equal with men in redemptive status, right? They're equal with men in the sense that they're, that they're both, you know, men and women are both made in the image of God. 
And so the Bible, is, the, Bible the, the message that the Bible shares on women is, is a significant departure from anything Andrew Tate's talking about. So he objectifies women. Women are things. They're meant to be sources of gratification. I mean, the, 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 the shit he says about women is just, I mean, just, this stuff's grotesque. Look, I mean, can I quote him? Sure. Females don't have independent thought. They don't come up with anything. They're just empty vessels waiting for someone to install the programming. <clears throat> By the way, that's a compliment. <clears throat> and and he he was describing um, what he would do if a woman accused him of cheating, because he he sleeps with multiple women. He brags about it. He's very open about it. In fact, he's often seen in in, in posse's, which is like scantily clad women dressed around him. He's not shy about that. So if a woman accused me for for, for cheating uh, of cheating, he says, "quote Bang out the machete, the machete, bang out the machete." Boom in her face and grip her by the neck. Shut up, bitch. <clears throat> That's his response. And yes, I'm quoting him in context. I'm not pulling stuff out. It's not a joke. Quote, this is him re responding to what he thinks women should do. Quote, and please, I'm going to say this, Nico. I'm going to use the disclaimer we put out. I'm going to say things that are offensive because they are what they are. And I want to quote him accurately. If there's kids in a room, please ask him to, to step out because this is, this is rough language. So hear me out. I'm quoting... Uh, that wonderful philosopher, Andrew Tate. Quote, shut the fuck up. Have kids, sit at home, be quiet and make coffee. And by the way, men can cheat all they want, but men, women shouldn't cheat. They should stay at home. And that is a Sharia thought. That is absolutely right? a Sharia yeah. thought. Yeah. Uh, or a, a Sharia thought. In a, and it's, it's, in, it's in the Hadiths. It's in the Quran. It's, yeah. in, the, it's in Muhammad's Sirah. 18-year-olds uh, are, quote, more attractive than 25-year-olds because they've been through less dick. Oh, my gosh. So... <clears throat> Uh, I, I, yeah. I mean, it, I was trying to find one that actually, um, but, but this is what, what I, I'm, you know, so sorry, you're, what you said earlier was, <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, so much. So, but do you think like, I don't have a transition out of that? Well, you I'll can't you do it. I'll do it for you. <laughs> so, so this is the overcorrection from, it's almost like this is an overcorrection yeah. because of, of, of the pansy of, of how, how manhood is being, <clears throat> been attacked over the years, being called toxic. Which, which you, you, your point earlier was this is, plays into the yeah. argument of toxic masculinity. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so, so without talking about him too much, because I want to talk about biblical masculinity. Sure. I think yeah. your point earlier was that Andrew Tate has sprinkles of truth in his, in his advocacy. The best lies do. But exactly. I was going to say, how do you make yeah. a lie believable or good? Yeah. You take a little bit of truth and then you expound on it in line. Yeah. Stored it. And so that's what he seems to have done. Now, in all fairness, I have not heard him say stupid. And I don't follow him like Salo does or anybody else. I just found out about this guy three months ago. Um, I just found out about this guy three months ago. So I, I haven't just watched. But I've, I've have seen an interview of him since he's been out of jail. But would you indulge me, please, just for literally? Sure. I want to just finish. Because I said I said three things. I only said one because I wanted to give some examples of, the, of, the, of what he says about women. Yeah. The other thing is, this, so, so basically real men or what he calls himself an alpha male uh, sleep with lots of women. They lots and lots and lots of women. You're you're you know, again, you're not a man unless you've unless you see women as things, women to be sources of pleasure, unless you, you basically <clears throat> conquer women sexually. The other thing is that real men make lots of money. I mean, he's, he's pervasive about that. And you can't see a video where he's not constantly talking about you sitting there in his little sauna with the cigars and his, his gay ass uh, shades. And he's sitting there talking about what money he has. And, and this is common. It's lots and lots of money. If you don't have money, by the way, if you don't have money, then you're not, you're not, a, you're not a high value man. You're really not. And if you're working your ass off, you're a dumbass. I mean, this is pervasive. It's pervasive because you see, if you don't have lots of money, get back to point one, women don't want to sleep with you. That's the problem. So that's, that's the second thing he says. And the last thing he says is that real men are free. Now, this isn't American freedom. This isn't biblical freedom, Nico. You know how we're free talking to about do it order and liberty is, right. con is constitutional liberty. Your freedom ends where my nose begins. Mm -hmm. You can't be so free that you literally do anything that you want to do. Screw your neighbor. That's not the kind of freedom. He's literally, he, that's the kind of freedom he's espousing to. You do whatever the hell you want to do. In fact, this is what's behind his move to Romania. And he was in a video saying that. I think it was one of the videos that we had shown over text a while ago where he says, one of the reasons he moved to Romania is that he's literally free to do whatever the hell he want to do. And he thought that he could, I mean, he's quoting, I'm quoting him. He says that, he, he, look, a significant reason why I'm moving there, a significant percentage of the reason why I'm moving there is because I think I can get away. Uh, you know, I'd be able to get away with rape charges a hell of a lot easier than I'd be able to get away here in the UK.
He didn't say that, did he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he was saying was, that Romania is like a mafia state that he can kind of. And then you wonder why authorities, because his brother, Tristan, uh, is a, what, what's that? I mean, is it a manager, Jeff? I don't know what the actual title is. Probably. But, but they have, there's a, there's a porn site. Mm. There's a porn site and his, his brother brags about it and he's a manager it's on like that a, particular porn site. It's like a so I wonder why thing. there are, there are, you know, uh, uh, accusations of, of pornography and sex trafficking because the reality is those two ain't are linked. Sure. So I'll, I'll shut up. Can now. I I'll add you, just I'll a little you. bit of context? I'll let you talk. He was an atheist for a very long, a professing atheist do you have for a, microphone? a very long time. Yes, I do. Okay, good. Uh, he was a professing atheist for a very long time. Then he became a Christian or he claimed to be a Christian for like three to four months, then immediately <laughs> shifted to Islam like that. So just to make it clear, it's not like this guy was some, you know. Well, look, I mean, pillar yeah, of Christianity. Christianity. I, didn't, I didn't know that about the three month Christian you know, kind of romping. Because he felt actually what you guys feel, that the church isn't you know. standing up and fighting for the culture. So no, that's well, he's right about that, but yeah. that doesn't mean that the well, Christianity is yeah. fake or, or bullshit. Even right. a broken Just clock because, right twice a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so for, for, from, from a biblical masculinity standpoint, you know, we're not supposed to look at it. We're supposed to look at the example of Christ. And when you think about Absolutely. a that's biblical what, that's man, what a real man, looks like. a real man is Jesus Christ. I mean, we always say, that what did he do when you talk about an Ephesians 5 servant leader and why a woman, a wife would want to support that mission? We talk about the word submit and what it truly means, meaning just support the mission. So more support the mission of what? Service, sacrifice and die. So are you supporting the mission it. of yes. a true man serving his wife and his Absolutely. family, sacrificing for his wife and family and ultimately dying for his wife and, and go, family? And go one further because we were talking about protector. Yeah, you're absolutely. He served people. He defended the weak. Well, th that that's that, right. was, that that was next. And, and yeah, yes. yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. You, it's fine. Either one. And, and, but, he, and he died. He but, but died so, for. So so Jesus led the church. He led the church for the benefit of the church. A man is supposed to lead his family, his wife, right. and his children right. for their benefit. Right. And and he doesn't get to define what that benefit is. God does. That's a true biblical man to serve, sacrifice, and die. Yeah. So Jesus, what did he do? He stood in front of the bride. Yeah, he took the right. brunt of he sin took, for right. us. He, he sacrificed, hit. served, and died for us. Absolutely. A man, a true man, should sacrifice, serve, and die for his wife and his children. And then in that, there's so much. I mean, Jesus was obviously compassionate, but true compassion, not this distorted, bastardized definition of compassion today. I mean, true empathy and sympathy and compassion, yeah. love, service, but also he was a badass. I mean, he kicked the shit out of people in, 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 in the in the temple, the money changers. He cussed innocent. out the Pharisees in Matthew 23. To dare protect you know, the innocent, the exploited who couldn't do the same 100%. for themselves. Yeah. He was, what was he? He was a friend of sinners, right? That's the second count of his indictment. I mean, he, he the, the, the sick and the poor. And the, I mean, he, he was, he was an, I, like I've told you before, George, and I think that we, I've, I've said on the show many times, I was fascinated and intrigued by the historical Jesus before I was all in committed to the messianic Jesus. I mean, I, I, I mean, he, he, he's fascinating to me he's, as a historical figure. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, he fascinated me. And so we as, as, as biblically minded men look to Christ as our example and he was a badass. And so you bet. look, I mean, you look at first Corinthians, can you pull you, can you pull up a passage, J yeah. Jeff? First Corinthians 16, 13. Mm hmm. NIV says it a little different. Other other versions, uh, it says be a man, you know. But in the NIV, it says be strong in the faith, act, you know, steadfast, firm, strong. So some versions say act like men. I mean, so Paul has given us our marching orders and, and of what it means. I mean, NIV says it this way. It says be on your guard. So a true biblical man should be on his guard, as Christ was too, right? Stand firm in the faith. So strength and then being persuaded by, by Christ, looking at him for the example. Be courageous, not a pansy ass, right? Be courageous, meaning doing stuff that scares you. Be strong. Yes. Yeah. And then lastly, yeah. do everything in love. That's right. And, and, and that, that they don't seem like that mixes us together, yeah. but being strong and firm and sacrificial and, and, and servant, that is love. You know, telling yeah. a child no, disciplining, standing up for your spouse, for your wife, for your children, for, for principles. Mm -hmm. And this is why I love to tie in when I, mm -hmm. in, in my martial arts training and in my, in my upbringing, in my background, I studied different warrior types, right? Whether it's a Spartan or whether it's, you know, whatever word. And I was always fascinated by the samurai, which is why the, the, the seminar that will eventually 
be a reality, you know, being a spiritual samurai, mastering the art of manhood type stuff. There are, there are, you, I mean, you, as you're, as you're talking, is there a better example of the alpha male than Jesus Christ? No, himself? Of absolutely not. not. I mean, I was thinking about the example. <laughs> but the alpha of, male is not, right. not, not the machismo male. That the, no, like, it's a, that's you a know, bullshit. I, I, yeah, the bastardized like, you know, the whole, version. The, it's super bastardized. You know, the, the Mexican, and I'm Mexican, so I guess under society standards, I have the right to criticize that aspect yeah, right. of the bastardized and, and culture. By definition, and this is not all Mexicans, by the way. Oh, but, you know, the, like, yeah, I give my this and that and yelling at people. The whole idea of machismo is not masculinity, mm -hmm. not biblical masculinity. Go ahead, George. No, but I think that's the irony. This is the contradiction in, in Andrew T. And this is what's deeply concerning is that the very, the very shit that he preaches against, he actually does. Mm. So I think he's actually a beta male. I don't see him as an alpha male at all. I think he's actually a beta male. He's actually enslaved to the very indulgences that he rails against. We are here in society because, because our institutions, that's right, are preaching and selling this bullshit to children. What are they teaching children? They're teaching children to pursue their lowest, the lowest possible desires to indulge. That's, that's, that's what they're doing. And so Andrew Tate is, is doing the exact same thing, just on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So he would say that we're teaching kids to be beta males. And so he calls himself an alpha male. But at the, the reality is the Bible says a true alpha male does not give into his urges and his desires, is a man of self-control. You want to see Jesus in action displaying this quality? No better example than when he's in a desert. Hmm. Luke chapter four, verses five through seven He's in the desert. He's being tempted by the, by the enemy of our souls to what? To rule the world. If you worship me, and he's, he's looking around at all the cities of the world, right? And, 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 and saying, all of this can be yours. This is what I mean. The devil is, is, I mean, can he possibly be more effing stupid? This is the son of God. He doesn't, doesn't click, right? He's just assuming, hey, Jesus is trapped in his humanity. So I'm going to pull a dumb and dumber. So you're saying there's a chance and maybe, maybe Jesus is going to forget that he's God and he's going to make a totally human, short-sighted and stupid decision. He's actually going to, he's actually going to service me, but he uh, serve me, but he, tr he tried it anyway. And so what did Jesus do? If he was Andrew Tate, what do you think he would have done? That sounds like a really good idea, yeah, man, because that's part, that's part of Tate's sermon. Right. Right. And so, but Jesus took the opposite. He, he took the path of a lowly servant. And yet, yet I love that Jesus himself said before Pilate, do you remember that? That's our famous discourse. Hey, don't you think that I could call down? I love that. It's such a badass sort of Clint Eastwood movie. Right. Don't you think I could call down a host mm -hmm. of angels to free me from the cross? Don't you think I could do that? But he chose, he chose not to. Like you said, he he chose to give himself. Yeah. You know, he to he, pour he himself suffered. out. That's a man. But 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 here's the deal. And then we always use that from you know John eighteen. Also, we say when he says, I came here to testify to the truth. That's what I'm here mm -hmm. for. And then Pilate says that very famous line that, that we say today yeah, in our sarcastically, society. Yeah. Sarcastically, yeah. yeah. What's truth? And then he walks like, away. There is the truth. Like, screw truth. Yeah. yeah, your truth is not my truth. Yeah. Their truth, because they're the, the angry mob. I'm going to give in to their truth, and you're screwed. Well, he you know, he allowed himself. You didn't screw him yeah, over, Pilate. Exactly, exactly but, right. But all that to say. So so here, I want to say this quickly. I, I'll go through it quickly, because I, I put together some notes, because I've studied the samurai over over the years, number one is a fierce warrior. I love the mindset of a samurai. The samurai fascinated me as, as, a, as a fighting, you know, uh, army. There were samurai, but, and, and, but the individual samurai, people think they were just a bunch of gang member badasses, you know, talking shit. The samurai had really neat vir eight virtues, characteristics that you can tie to a biblical tie in each one of these, you know, and that's what always fascinated me. Not only were there, the, these were Bushido, Bushido virtues, the Bushido just means the way of the warrior, eight virtues. And, and, and there was an emphasis on compassion, at, actually. Although I, I always say the samurai had a big butt. They were all of these eight virtues, but if he drew that sword, yeah. heads were falling yep. and heads were falling. Trains you know? left the station. Yeah. Yep. So number one, justice. Defined as power to decide a course of conduct okay. in accordance with reason, right? They, they, they reason through stuff without wavering. I love that part. To die, when to die is right. To strike, 
when it's appropriate. To, it's like an Ecclesiastes yeah. three mindset, right? Yeah. There's a time for everything under the world in this world, and so they understood a sense of true justice. Number two, courage. Doing, but they 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 described it differently. It was different than bravery. Bravery was I'm not afraid of shit. I'm going in, you know, 100 warriors outside. I don't give a crap. And we always say every strength taken to an extreme can be a weakness, right? Well, so they distinguished it from bravery. It it was doing what is right. The courage Mm -hmm. to do what is right, knowing what's right, and then doing what it is count. It is counted only if it is exercised. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Courage is only counted to to your benefit if you can exercise it, which takes discipline and self control and yeah. you know so that was two so justice number one number two the, the second virtue is courage number three benevolence or mercy so love affection for others sympathy pity it, it was considered the highest attribute of the human soul mm-hmm. thought it was interesting mercy actually so they were prepared to kill you but to balance out their fierce warrior mentality and their ability to kill had to be balanced out with mercy right and benevolence so the fourth virtue was politeness the expression of courtesy and good manners. It is the highest form of politeness. The highest form of politeness actually approaches love, they, they taught. And if you go to a Japanese culture, a traditional Japanese culture, the manners and the courtesy, I mean, the, the properness and, and it's just, it's mm. top notch, top tier. And so they didn't divorce themselves from that just because they were fierce warriors. So politeness was the fourth virtue. Number five, honesty and sincerity. Interesting, right? Mm. And and they and they and they labeled it to, to Andrew Tate's example, the disdain for money, because if you didn't have a disdain for money, then your honesty and sincerity could be bought. Mm-hmm. So they taught to have a disdain for money. Talking about money showed poor taste. Luxury was thought to be a great menace to mankind. Mm-hmm. Interesting, right? Yeah. I mean, look at this, this, this love for money and things, mm-hmm. and and getting our value from that is truly distorting our sense of sincerity or genuineness as we say and honesty the sixth virtue was honor listen to this one a vivid consciousness of personal dignity or we get our dignity from the lord right and our worth and self-worth a vivid consciousness of it the fear of disgrace hung over the head of the samurai Right. But we have no we, we don't have a sense of honor to heaven. We don't have a sense of honor to Jesus. You can clearly see the overlaps. Absolutely. Absolutely. Biblical principles on what men ought to hold dear. Yes. And what's this, being taught here. This is why this, yeah. this always uh, drew me in. So the honor was the sixth virtue. The seventh virtue, two more, was loyalty, mm-hmm. personal fidelity. Only in the code of chivalrous honor does loyalty assume paramount importance. So they had they were loyal to their debtors. They were loyal to their 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 their, yeah. their, their leaders and their, their their kind of their commanders in the army. They were loyal to their friends and and of course their family. This personal fidelity. And here we are, a bunch of wussies in the church, not loyal to King Jesus. No, we are. Who died for us? We right? We are absolutely. I love so, that. And number eight, the last one is to your point earlier to about Andrew Tate, character or self control. Yeah. Right, which is a fruit of the spirit, yeah, right? Absolutely. Galatians 5.22. Behave in accordance, listen to this, to an absolute moral standard. What is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. The difference between good and bad is a given and not open for discussion to the samurai. A man should know the difference, mm-hmm. right? An obligation to teach. And then here's the second part of honor and I mean, character and self-control is an obligation to teach your children moral standards through the model of his own behavior. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah. And you know, what have I said for a long time that your children will follow your example long before they follow your advice? Yeah. And so we're called, and it's Proverbs 22, 6, right? Start a child up in the way they will go. But how? By them looking at you, first of all. And when they get older, they will not depart from it. I mean, I mean, again, there's different, there's you can lot, read there's and a study. Lot, there's a lot, a lot there. Lot I was just trying to piece out some of the stuff I've looked over in the past and these, and these, these eight virtues of the Bushido the, the way of the warrior. And then, of course, this is not taken away from the fact that they were fierce killers. Mm-hmm. Can, 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 how can both of those things coexist and reside in the yeah. same human, yeah, in exactly. the same mind? It can. Jesus taught that, showed that, like you said, in the, in the, yeah. in the temple. Um, Jesus was the ultimate man. He was the ultimate alpha male, mm-hmm. but in, 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 a, in a heavenly perspective, understanding the service and the sacrifice and dying to himself carrying the literal cross, but then carrying his own personal cross. I mean, I just love it. So I mean, the it was spiritual just a, samurai a, example really a just- perfect embodiment of, of all these wonderful characteristics. Isn't it crazy? The ultimate. Look, there's a, there's a trial lawyer, uh, and you should appreciate that. So from one trial lawyer to the next, but 
there's a trial lawyer by the name of Jim Priest, and he's he's a trial lawyer in Oklahoma. And uh, I had I had read a piece from him. Golly, I I think it was in the Oklahoman, and and he was he didn't have a list of eight. He, he, his list was shorter and he kept it a little simpler, but I think you can appreciate it. He said, real men are tempered, but they're not tame. Ooh, I like that. Real men are tempered. Yes, I love that. What a good way to say it. Two, real men are patient, mm. but they're not passive. Good one too. Yep. And he said, real men persevere, yep. but they're not perfect. Those are great. I'm going to have to get those. And, <laughs> Who's and, the guy? What's the guy? Uh, Jim Priest. And Jim he's a trial lawyer. In Oklahoma. Wow. Is he still alive? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jim and and he, he writes occasionally, and, and, and I, I like his stuff. And I thought that was really, a, good. really a great way to encapsulate a lot of, a lot of biblical principles yeah. on the characteristics. Is he a Christian? Of, he is indeed. Mm. Of a, of a, is he a priest? No, he is not. Well, he is a priest. He's not the uh, Catholic priest. <laughs> yeah, he is. That's right. Um, on, and Jeff, Jeff, thank you for, I saw your text. That's, you're absolutely right. It's in Matthew 26, right? Right yes. before the Sanhedrin. I yes. was going to say, and, and it is true, but I, I was talking to, I say, I said Pilate. Yeah. Okay, Peter. He said right. it to Peter. Right, after he now, cut I off think, the ear. Yeah, I think in Matthew, it doesn't call out Peter. Right. It says a companion of Jesus what you, or something. What did I miss? I, no, I was saying that he said, you know, who do you, basically he's saying, I'm paraphrasing who you think you're talking to. Don't you think I could call down a host of angels? He didn't say that to Pilate. He said that to Peter. Mm. After he cut off the ear. Mm. Yeah, right. So my, my, my uh yeah my mouth's running away um but but the point is the same is that you know this is when peter pulled out his his sword to cut off the ear of the of the roman guard and jesus is like hey man um don't need your help i got it you know um yeah i'm st still in charge really it, it's okay and don't you think i could literally call down an army from heaven but there's a plan here and i'm exercising self-control it's interesting because if i don't exercise self-control peter you're dead you're dead in your sins. You'll always be dead in your sins. And there's no hope for you, your family, mm. and everyone who come after you. So because of self-control, I'm going to go to the cross because I can see the end from the beginning. And sometimes real men have to make really tough choices. Yes. And they may have to die for those choices. That's what I mean. Can you find a better personification of true alpha malehood than Jesus well, Christ? Well, service, sacrifice, and death to yourself is 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 are the characteristics if you're just going to boil it down service sacrifice and death of a biblically minded man so if someone has to stand at the door of your home to defend your home yeah. it's the man right if someone has to starve it's the man if someone has to be cold yeah who are you going to count the man? on that's right you're going to count you know, on men that are bold and they're strong and they're filled with conviction conviction you're not you're not going to you're not going to call on men deep love that have been children pansyfied by the American educational system. And I'm sorry, in many cases, supported by the American evangelical church mm. and, and by ignorant parents in the name of compassion. But, 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 but I think there's a deeper issue here when you see the An Andrew Tate drawing so many young men in. They're, they're missing something. I mean, you and I have talked about Jordan Peterson in the past. And I hope that he finally makes that jump. I, but I'm glad he brought up Islam because at least we can make those Ooh. connections. Tate. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah. he's saying because his view of women actually reconciles rather nicely. I, I agree. So I'm that's not. an important discussion to be had because Islam Islam's growing. And it's growing at a faster pace than Christianity. Well, it's part, partly because they have four kids. A faster one. rate. But, but yes. Well, but, 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 but when, when true Islam is taught, I mean, that's a whole different discussion, right? But with the Hadith, the Quran, the Sirah. And understanding the tenets, many of the tenets. That's a different discussion. We can talk about, we've done show on it in the past, I think a couple of years ago. We can do it again. But I'm just saying that there's a reason why the Andrew Tates, and of course, I'm not comparing Jordan Peterson to Andrew Tate at all. I, I know, they're I know they're very mean. different. Jordan has a lot of good stuff to say. He does. A lot of good teachings. He does. I think he overall does good for men in, in, a, in a positive way. Because, what, what, because, you know, Jordan Peterson says the same thing that, that men should be monsters under control. What does he say? I, men should be monsters, just not act like it. I, and I, that's a wonderful way to describe it. And, and, and I believe it was him. I want to give him credit if it was. I always use the example of uh, the rabbit is not, ver is not righteous. The rabbit is weak. I mean, what the hell is a rabbit going to do to you? Rabbit's over here, you know, cussing you out, talking shit to you, 
I said, what are you going to do? You're a, you know, you're a, you're, you're a rabbit. What are you going to do? Get out of here. You know, the rabbit can't do shit to you. Now, if a lion walks into the room yeah. and treats you well, well, he's righteous. Talk about a right? great, because he's a, a lion. Great differentiation of the, of the, a real man is patient, but not passive. A rabbit mm. is truly passive. Well, Everybody's, the rabbit's weak, yeah. not just passive. Yeah. He's weak. What the, even if the, have you ever seen an aggressive rabbit? What the hell are they going to do to you? Yeah. Not a damn thing. You can be a pissed off rabbit all you want. You're still a stupid ass rabbit, you know, and not going to do anything. It takes a sweet ass time while a predator, you know, I shouldn't say stupid them. ass rabbit, poor rabbit lovers. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean, I'm saying the rabbit's That's not going to be shit to you. It's very, very, very <laughs> ah, sensitive of you. Know, Look, uh, I, ju I just think the connection is, is telling, um, because, uh, you know what a surah is. A surah is a, is a, is a is chapter. A chapter. Yeah. So the Quran in, in Surah 434 says that men have, uh, what's the word, authority, mm. men of authority uh, over women uh, because, wait for it, Allah has made men superior to women. End of quote. Mm. Uh, it's, it's a little hard to come back from that, you know, and, and then, then you get into things like, well, women are, de are, are deficient in intelligence and they're deficient in their conviction, their religion um, to, to Allah. And, and, the, and the, the hadith and the Quran are loaded with really demeaning characterizations mm -hmm. of women. So, so, you, so it, it, it's not a big stretch to see where, where he's coming from. And and the support he's getting from from the Quran and the Christians should should be should be aware of that. Well, I just but I his wish, digs on Christianity. I think in many ways, in many cases, are well. The, are the, legit. Dig, the digs on 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 the lack of courage and conviction of of, of many Christians, not all, is 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 legitimate and, and should be heeded because it's it's a legitimate you know they yeah. you know his a his criticism. Yeah. One of them is. You guys don't even know what you believe. You have so many different. That he doesn't understand that Islam has, has different sex also and different and different levels of of. Because I know some people that that do not follow hadith. You know the, the traditions. They don't they don't conform to Sharia and they don't believe that. So they're really just Islamic kind of entitled, mm -hmm. and then and then they kind of want to reform it to their own way. Like a lot of people are doing to Christianity in a bad way. I think other people are doing to Islam in a in a, in a, in a more positive way. In my humble mm -hmm. opinion. But, but, but regardless, I mean, this wasn't a show on Andrew Tate. It was, it's, it's a show on, on masculine, biblical masculinity. So, so the, the, the biblically minded man is, is a strong man. Doesn't have to be the strongest. Doesn't have to be some gang member, badass, you know, but just someone that, that understands strength in the mind, first of all, mm -hmm. strength of the mind, strength of the faith. And then yes, be some level of perseverance physically, I think. A man should be a man. Like in the old days, you know, you go out to the ranch, you, the men, you know, barreled the hay, you know, threw out the hay and, and, mm -hmm. and, and they all had their duties. And, and a man should, be, in, in their form, whatever God designed that person, I'm not as strong as other men and other men aren't as strong as me and I'm better than this and I'm worse, weaker in this. That's just the way we're designed. But we should all have some level of, of capability in defending our family or at least the willingness to capably, mm -hmm. I mean, to, to, to defend our family. So strength in our faith first and our mentality. And then of course, physically, but then deeply love God's definition of agape love, that servant leadership, that servant love, that love that says that I will serve sacrifice and die for the people that I love, which are my wife and my children and, and God's creation as well. But I mean, your first ministry is in your home. Right. And so that that service, that sacrifice and that death to self, death to selfishness, death to your flesh in servant leadership. And you serve your wife and your children to their benefit, to their benefit. It's not to serve them for you, to make yourself feel good. You don't serve them so you can puff yourself up. You serve them for their benefit. Absolutely. And God yeah. gives you your marching orders. Absolutely. And his marching orders are this in Ephesians five. Love your wife. Like Christ, like I love the church, mm -hmm. serve, sacrifice, and died for the church. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the women are like, oh, yeah, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. And men are like, are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure, asshole. Serve your wife. Love her. But it's got to be genuine, right? It's got to be a deep love for her because do you look at your wife the way Christ looks at us? That's a, when I started looking at Dobby that way, I said, gosh. I, it changes everything. It changes everything when yeah. you say, Lord, love Dobby through me. You know, do, do I look at Dobby the way Christ love the church. And, and I, and I have to, and, and that was a big shift. I mean, you know, you guys been married with almost 30 years, 30 or 25, 
We're going to be married 30 years on the 20th of this month. That's what I thought. It was coming up. Well, happy early. Congratulations. I can't believe she tolerated you. That she long. made it easy. But seven, yeah, no, no kidding. But seven, and then we're 17 years in July, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. And so, so, but when you start, when you start looking at your wife, the way Christ looks at us, the body, the bride of Christ, it truly is. There's a shift mm-hmm. and, 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 and it's big, it's greater than your feelings. And it's greater than anything in your flesh. Yeah. Listen, listen to what Nico's saying. I mean, listen, listen to the language that that's real manhood. Mm. Okay. Don't buy into this bullshit, man. This is counterfeit manhood. This is bullshit. This dude is the biggest beta male out there. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit how many tattoos he has. I don't care. I I really don't care um, that he was a great fighter. Was he a great fighter? I don't even know. I mean, that's the rumor. I don't know. It's irrelevant. It really is irrelevant. Listen to what Nico's saying though. Here, here you have men as he's describing them per the scripture who have deep and genuine concerns for women because they should be honored. Yes. So, so whereas Tate would say that women, because he would say women shouldn't allow themselves to be taken advantage of, but then he takes advantage of them. Mm. So as I agree with the first part, women should not allow themselves to be taken advantage of. But, but the point is it's my job as a husband, as a father to make sure that I protect my family and that my wife remains honored and safe and that I position myself in life by God's grace so that I can help her. I mean, and that means being physically fit. It matters how you treat your body. It matters what goes into your body. It matters that you exercise. By the way, Andrew Tate calls the exploitation of women exercise. He literally calls it exercise. I was trying to leave to a, to a, a quote, uh, Okay. Quote, I go out and have sex and I come back to her, his girlfriend, and I don't care about her, the other women he has sex with. I only love my girl. That's not cheating. That's exercise. End of quote. Okay. That, that's not manhood. That's not alpha malehood. Okay. This guy's not an alpha male. He's a mollusk. Be careful with that. We, wh- why is it that there's a flock to this kind of worldview? Just putting Tate aside, it's a worldview out there. It's these extremes. What's, what, why, are, why are young men flocking to that? You know, I'm, I'm it's got cur- millions of views on TikTok. Yeah, but views that, I mean, you can watch someone watching. I'm curious how many followers he has. But he has a lot of followers, right, Jeff? I mean, but hold on, but, mil- but, okay. but I'm talking about true followers that take his advice mm. versus Jordan Peterson I mean, he does, to your point, what contribution does he have? He's not, I mean, you know. Yeah, what does this guy build? I mean, he doesn't have a book. He's not, you know, the 12 rules for life that Jordan Peterson has out there, they're biblical principles, but he doesn't make any bones about it. He teaches the effectiveness and the logical consistency of biblical principles, actually. And he's been doing it for years, right? You could could argue he and his brother have an, it's called OnlyFans, by the way. I couldn't remember the name. OnlyFans porn site. It's basically what it is. Well, I mean, look, what I'm saying is that's, that's a fringe. People that watch him, it's all, I think it's sometimes you're watching a, a, a train wreck. You know, it's like, oh shit, it's going to be a train wreck, but I'm still going to watch it. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if, there, if he has followers, people that hang on his every advice, on his word, listen to him for wisdom. Well, the I mean, only he's fan- not filling up stadiums. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pro Jordan Peterson or anti him. I'm just giving an example. Jordan Peterson fills up stadiums around the world talking and reasoning with people through issues and really talking a lot about biblical principles too. And he talks about Christ as we've seen. He doesn't, you know, say he's, he's, you know, bowed his knee to him and handed over governorship to him yet. We haven't heard that, but all I'm saying is I think Jordan Peterson has followers. I don't, I'm not, I don't know yeah. if he does. I don't know if Andrew Date does. I hope yeah, he we're does. Yeah, we're following you need him because I, I think it's in the millions, but I don't know, Nico. I, I, I'll say, I, 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 mean, I, people I don't know. Watch Between him, TikTok yes. and YouTube. Yeah, I got it. And then, and then the other platform where only fans, would you call it, Jeff, a webcam? Webcam website? A webcam website. It's like, uh, men, I'm sorry. it's like men go on there to watch women, you know, do provocative stuff. And so this is, this is where he and, and Tristan, his brother, get off. So, so I want to, this is straight out of his, straight out of his, his own mouth quote, how can I use these women to make me money? So I text all my girlfriends, all five and said, you're all coming here to live with me and work with me. We're going to start a webcam business. We're going to get rich and we're going to be a team. People think I'm running around with these hoes because I like sex. I got these 
bitches, just so everyone knows who the Don is. End of quote. Okay. And uh, who was, I mean. And so, <laughs> yeah, right. And you you walked in at a Tommy great time. Walks in. <laughs> this is what come we believe. Hi. Chilla, say hi. Come say hi. Come say hi. Come say hi. Speaking of my queen. Chilla. Speaking of a biblically grounded <laughs> mama. My queen. Yes. How are you doing? Good. Love you. And that's uh, that's, that's how it's done. Okay. That's how it's <laughs> you done. You're gonna have to, Joe George. Yeah, <laughs> Great to see you, friend. Good to see you. Those are some uh, cool next time sneakers. we'll have to think of about like a better those. moment. Better moment when for you to walk in. Can walk in. Like, let, let us <laughs> let us pray. What is Theo yeah. George yeah. talking about? <laughs> you should have done. Yeah, I, I I should have seen her coming, but I you could have. Uh, well, look, guys. I mean, look. I mean, we're we're putting together a seminar. You know, Davi's part of works with Salvo's wife, Edith, um, in, in this wonderful group they have. What's it called, Chula? She, she, is. she is. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a wonderful group that, that you know, really tries to minister and, and lead women to Christ and helps them work through life. And there's a lot of struggles in life and challenges. Give, is showing them their worth. And, you know, kind of that Psalm 139, you were woven together and you're fearfully and wonderfully made type yeah. mindset, knowing that the creator and the architect of the universe is batshit crazy about yeah. you and your role and your duty and your service to society and to your family and to this world. And so, and so we're, you know, you know, you and I have talked about this for years now and I, and, and, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to put this thing together. I'm actually doing it and update George on this and we're going to put together a, a, you know, mastering the art of manhood seminar um, you bet. with, with the theme of being a spiritual samurai. And if you look at these eight characteristics, they're biblically minded characteristics, but the idea of being a fierce warrior for heaven, but also understanding these characteristics through the lens of Christianity, through the, their the true source. The interesting thing is that a biblically grounded man attracts high value, biblically grounded women. Of course. That, that's the cool thing yeah. here. I mean, th this is, and as we're thinking about this pathetic worldview, this overcorrection to this effort, this horribly politicized effort to emasculate men in society. As we're, as we're thinking about this overcorrection, this grotesque overcorrection, uh, think about how it's really supposed to be, that a, that a man who pursues the things of God and, and models himself and how he lives life and how he thinks about reality after what Christ did is really going to attract um, the, the best best kind of women. There's no way that a wholesome, high value woman would be attracted to this. Oh, no, no. You know, a, a, a real I woman, no. a real woman yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't That's right. sell her That's body right. online. That's right. Like freaking property. That's right. For profit. That, that's not gonna, that's not gonna be that's not going to be okay. He talks about his girlfriend. What kind of girlfriend is this that is okay with him banging other women? And then flaunting it in her face. And dare she say anything about him cheating? We already said what he'd say back. What kind of self-respectable woman would do that, that values herself? So think about, think about that. You know, if, if you're listening and you're dating a guy like that, drop that loser, man. Well, you know, we, we, we believe in his fast. right to say stupid shit. That's his right man, to say, say it. Say whatever he wants. Um, but so we, we, we want the freedom and the autonomy for him to do it. But yeah, we don't want that to be the standard. He, he can't be the standard bearer. He say whatever he wants. And it tells, yeah. you the, the, it tells you the void, the societal void of true leadership for men and guidance for men if someone like Andrew Tate is, is drawing them to it. Now, again, I don't know how many people truly look to him as – I think they look up to it, like you said, the, 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 the allure of all these women and money and all this shit. But that's yep. a that's a that's a – Pit hole. I mean, look at Hollywood. I mean, look at Hollywood. I mean, I always use this as an example. I don't mean this to be disrespectful, but I mean, why did Robin Williams commit suicide? Why did Anthony Bourdain commit suicide? Why did this? I mean, Davi ed educated me because he had dirt on the Clintons. Um, <laughs> Kate Spade commit suicide, right? I mean, these are people that had everything that Hollywood or the world could offer them. You know, money, fame, yeah, fortune, right. but yet there was still something missing. There was something missing when, you know, when, when, a, when a tremendously talented and funny man that had so much to share with the world, Robin Williams, just says, I'm checking out, you know, I'm checking out. When Anthony Bourdain, you know, traveled around, ate food, you know, partied with people, traveled, saw beautiful areas in the world, had all kinds of money, I'm sure, but checked out.
Kate Spade leaves a letter hmm. to her daughter. I think she was 11 at the time, if I'm mistaken, I apologize, but a young daughter saying, I've always <clears> loved you. It's not <throat> your fault. Ask your dad. Hmm. Something of that nature. Who does that? How can you do that? What, what ideology or worldview yeah. that, that it allows you it's to cruel. do that and leave your cruel. child? How cruel. Um, so, and again, so all I'm saying is, is, is the world is, has a void. There, there's a void here that, that people like this and, and uh, someone better, Jordan Peterson, and other people are filling when the church should fill in the void. If, if the church, if the gospel is presented sincerely, genuinely, raw, authentic, gen, you know, just real and raw as we do here, you know, I'm not saying that we have, we're the perfect models of this. I'm just saying that if we present a genuine gospel, we wouldn't have to worry about false converts. I believe, I believe, I believe it was our friend Frank Friedman that said that years ago. He's a wonderful pastor and just a warrior for heaven. Gosh, he's got a wonderful testimony. I'm trying to get him down here to, to visit us and maybe we could do a podcast with him. He's a good, say, yes. oh, he's a, he's he's a, a good genuine man. person. He's I love him. Good, to hear. good man. So we'll have him down sometime soon. Miss but, Frank. Mm -hmm. but, but, but that's what he says. If, if we presented a, a, a genuine, authentic gospel. Absolutely people, irresistible. We, yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't have false converts. Yeah. You wouldn't fall away. Uh, so, you, said, you said something about the church, mm -hmm. and I, I want to. You know, I like C.S. Lewis. I know you like C.S. Lewis too. I, I have all his books, and um, I'm I'm I wish sure he, I'm I sure wish he do. had stayed on the earth longer, and had written more. But he he talks about, and you were talking about the church, and I think this is fitting. Um, how the 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 church seems to destroy uh, a young man's ability to to be a young man and yet demands that ability from the young man. Mm. And, and here's what, here, here's what he wrote. It's a, it, um, I went back and pulled that out of the abolition of man. That's a book that he wrote. This is I'm sure after he became a Christian, cause he was an atheist first, right? Yeah. Quote in a sort of ghastly simplicity, we remove the organ and demand the function. We make men without chests and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate and we bid the castrated to be fruitful. Mm, excellent. End of quote. I mean, not excellent. And he calls, he uses the good. word, I didn't use it because most people aren't familiar with it, but the, the actual quote is we castrate and bid the geldings be, brut be fruitful. Geldings meaning a castrated mm. man. And how profound, mm -hmm. you know, the church is busy partnering with a demonic movement and culture to castrate young men by virtue of deafening silence. In many cases, we seem to be okay with that. The American evangelical church. And yet we turn to young men and we say, what the hell's wrong with you? Go out there and be fruitful. Go out there and be solid, biblically grounded men. Marry a godly woman, serve her, mm. have children, be a godly example to them, yeah. be their protector, be a provider. Meanwhile, over here, they're, they're cutting their balls off yeah. by being absolutely silent with this demonic move in society. Here's one of my motivations. One of our motivations. Look at that. We're getting visited by well, all I'm the glad that I wasn't, we weren't saying what we were saying before. So, came in. Yeah. So this oh. has gone PG. I'm so glad. <laughs> hey, honey. Nice. Welcome. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm going to do a podcast with us. Whenever you invite. Ooh, <laughs> hey, like that will be PG rated. We'll do PG Christianity. PG 13. PG rated Christianity. You know, we talk Jesus in here, but Shrek is, is okay. We can talk Can't, Shrek. I'm swamp. <laughs> Shrek's a good man. He's got a lot of smart things to say. I mean, I like Shrek. <laughs> you know, you know, I was asked, I was asked by one of the associate pastors at our church. He said, what is your, what is your greatest desire? And, and, and I, and no one ever asked me like, well, if you could have one, you know, yeah, distill it to one, huh? Yeah, distill it to one wish. I mean, I, and I said, aside, and I had to say this one because this one, of course, engulfs us. And, you know, if aside from Michael being healed, you know, hmm. and off the spectrum of autism, but I said, I want my daughters to marry real men who are godly and are insanely in love with Jesus and that will love them. And make no like apology Christ, for him. No, I, make no I mean, apology. I mean, marry, you know, Amen. marry men, marry men, and a true man loves Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And what it, we don't know if C.S. Lewis said this, but man, I hope he did because it sounds <laughs> so C.S. Lewis that a woman, a woman's heart should be so close to Christ that a man would have to, should have to go to through him, through him to, get to get to her. her. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I, you that. know, it sounds like something Lewis would have said. It's a beautiful quote. We just, I, 
uh, there's enough to make us skeptical that he that he said it. Well, but nevertheless, I'll ask him when I see him. It's in very, very, <laughs> very, very true. Very, very true. You know, he died on the same day. I, I, I say it once in a while, and it just it, it it bothers me a little bit. He died on the exact same day as as uh, President John Kennedy, F. Kennedy yeah. as his assassination on November twenty second, nineteen sixty three. And unfortunately, How did he pass away. Uh, it was natural causes. How old was he? Not very old at all. Well, how old is that? 60s? Uh, yeah. C.S. Yeah. Lewis was in the I mean, First World War. Well, maybe you that's know. what got him. I don't know. But, I mean, well, bro, I mean, he, 1963, that makes sense. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't a very old man at all. Certainly hmm. not by today's standards. But but I don't like that he didn't get, frankly, the fanfare that he deserved because so, you... so potent what his, was his impact well, in, uh, to, to Christianity. You know, Look, we can talk about we'll, we'll, You'll hear more about this if and when we have when, when we have it, not if we have the the seminar on mastering the art of manhood. Well, let's ask. What do you guys seminar. think about that? Would you come? Well, I don't care. We're gonna do it anyway. No, I, we are. Out, but I'm I don't curious. Be way in about that. I'm just good. Just wondering. Curious. We're good. Yeah. You're gonna go, but we'll let you know. And then yeah, the whether guy, it's one person guys, or a thousand people, the right? guys can show up. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this little conversation on critically thinking through this issue of biblical manhood and manhood in general and toxic masculinity and all that bullshit, um, which, which, which uh, share this with someone you think might benefit from it. If there are topics, look, you know, we can go back to teaching kind of more traditional teachings, biblical teachings that we did at the beginning of the podcast that started over four years ago, but it just seems like there's so much at stake today in society that we, how do we not address current issues and just, and, and, and address them through the, through the lens of a, of a biblical mind. Yeah. and a heavenly mind so but again we're not here to hear ourselves talk we're really here for you so let us know what you what you think and what you would like to hear check out sidebar oh check out sidebar thanks jeff check out sidebar saturday mornings nine o'clock WEI, or on facebook live right yep or YouTube. Right, or youtube or youtube and if you want to know where all this is i mean sidebar tv.com solo keeps telling me just say that sidebar tv.com look for so sidebar tv.com is our rated, on there? Is our rated or, on there too that is correct our rated is on there too yeah so we stream oh. Uh, are rated to umbrella. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch right now. Well, there you go. I don't know shit about technology, so <laughs> I just show up and open my mouth. God bless you guys. Have a great week.